Hello and welcome along to another noob session. So, um, in this session, what I'm going to cover is obviously what you see in front of you are the paints I'm going to be using uh, to paint the uh, Mossazabi Verkai. Um, so, where to start? So, we'll obviously start with the priming. Okay, so the primers I'm going to be using are Vallejo Polyurethane Surface Primer, um, the white one, um, the grey one, and the black one. And what I've done here. I've got uh, the remnants of uh, some white that I had left and I've added some Vallejo Model Air Scarlet and that's going to create a, uh, a pink uh, undercoat and what that'll do, you'll be able, I'll be able to adjust the tone slightly of any of the paints uh, for the main uh, armour on the body so uh, it's not going to be white and it's not going to be a grey so I'll have a nice pink primer underneath there and that I think the uh, the paint will sit better on that and uh, show through better um, during the end of the uh, the build so um, those are the uh, primers I'm going to be using and let's have a look at the main paints I'm going to be using on the red arm okay so these are the colours I'm going to be using for uh, the red armour parts, they're, they're predominantly the uh, Citadel colour from Games Workshop and uh, the reason why I chose them, they were already very close to the original colour of the sprue uh, so uh, without dragging armour parts out to show you, we, we're just using a uh, Mephisto red uh, there's a red gore, a uh, screamer pink and a corn red um, if you can't get anywhere near the, the armour colours by using these four colours here alone, there's some, got to be something wrong with you. But uh, also, there's some Tamiya X7 red, um, some uh, Vallejo Model S Scarlet red, and to highlight that or lighten it, uh, some uh, just the um, orange. And for the pre shading and all the reds, I'm either going to be using whole red. Or burnt umber or something like that just a, you know, a dark very dark red or a, a good brown so um, I'll be doing some test uh, test spoons and alike uh, and I'll be showing you the results but um, like I said that the these colors are so very close to uh, the armor parts I, I think it's going to be a breeze actually if I'm, if I'm telling you the truth so right then once we've done the armor or before we do the armour, I should say, I'm going to tattle the inner frame. So let's take a look at the colours of the inner frame. Okay then, so uh, the inner frame, uh, how I'm going to go about it, it's, it's going to be a lot easier than my uh, new Gundam that I did. Um, I'm not going to go to as much detail. The only detail I'm really going to be picking out is uh, around the joint areas. Um, where it's exposed on the model. If it's under the arm, if it's under armor plating, um, once the armor goes on, it's never going to come out. And the parts by that get exposed by the transformation mode, I'll de be detailing now. So um, let's take a look at what I'm going to be using. Uh, as you can see, I've got um, several of the uh, Mr. Hobby, uh, mi sorry, Mr. Metal Color. Now these um, these are your buffer balls, and they give a really good natural metal finish look. So I'm thinking of using either the aluminium or the uh, the stainless on the uh, the parts of the armor that ca uh, sorry parts of the uh, inner frame that came uh, as that steel slash chrome color, which I don't really like for some reason. Uh, the molding tends to be a little softer, let's say, with the uh, but with using that plastic. But you know, I'm sure it'll uh, look all right once it's painted up uh, and. Uh, the majority of the frame though uh, will be uh, duralanium. I've got uh, Alclad 2 duralanium and I've also got some Alclad 2 gunmetal which I think um, using those two together will have uh, a good light and dark shade uh, around the entire inner frame. I've also got the, the old favourite that I've been using for a while now, the Spazdix Mirror Chrome. Uh, and uh, obviously the, the base for that I use the uh, Tamiya Enamels X1. Um, and to seal all these metalizers down with, I've brought some uh, Model Master sealer for metalizer, 
Now, uh, apparently how this works is uh, you spray it on after you've done your work, uh, your metalizer work. Now, some of you may have used uh, so, some of the varnishes in the past and they have took the, the edge off the, uh, the reflectiveness of the, uh, the properties of the metal itself. Now, uh, what this will do, this will go over the top of your metals and once it's dry, uh, it'll be exactly uh, the same as when you first put your metals down, which is good. I'm yet to try it, but I have seen people use it and um, it works, so uh, I've got myself some. And another thing it'll do with the metalizers, uh, you, you rub them to uh, bring up the shine, so they keep giving it up, they keep giving up that um, metal powdery, um, whatever it is they give out. Now, that will stop it once that's gone on, uh, so when you're handling them, eventually, um, uh, sorry, not eventually, when you're handling them, that it won't, uh, it won't rub off anymore, it'll just seal them down, hence the name, seal it for metalizer. So, those uh, the metallics I'm going to be using on parts of the inner frame. Uh, other metallics I've got here are again the Vallejo um, liquid gold range. Now these are the al alcohol based ones. Now they these are more for just picking out small bits of detail. Over a large area I don't really like them because uh, they leave brush strokes and once they go on they dry that quickly that the brush stroke yeah they are the brush strokes are visible but uh, small detail areas I really like them because they really shine and what what else am I going to be using I'm also going to be using the um, uh, uni pin uh, sorry uni paint marker now I've used this uh, quite extensively over the new Gundam uh, and because it's enamel I just thinned it down and um, with enamel paint uh, and put it in a bottle and it works absolutely fine really really shiny uh, a really nice solid gold metal I actually prefer it over the Alclad even though that says mirror gold it doesn't really work for me so uh, all the yellow parts that are going to be on the Sazabi are going to be covered in um, this gold colour uh, maybe uh, not the um, around the waist those little parts that go around the waist I might do those yellow but we'll see how it goes during the painting process so that that's pretty much all my metallics covered there there's quite a few excuse me big burp down the camera um, so uh, next we'll have a look at anything else that we might be wanting to use in uh, regards to painting or anything else on the on the kit Okay then, when it comes to um, putting a wash or some panel lining on the uh, model, um, what I'm going to be using are there's some Gundam model um, uh, model markers, some real touch and just the normal Gundam markers. I've got uh, the ones that I like to use in particular, they're not Gundam at all, but, uh, they're by a company called Unipin and I do like them. Uh, another thing I'm going to be using as well, uh, and I've used it in the past uh, to great effects and I really like the way things work out, uh, are these Flory models, um, weathering washes. Uh, uh, the three that I have are the light, the concrete and the dark dirt wash. You know, uh, by mixing those, because they're water based, you can mix them really easy, and you can keep them in a in a container. Once you've found like the uh, uh, the shade of wash that you want to put over the entire model, so it stays uniform. Um, uh, yeah, these are really easy to use, and uh, between uh, the pens and these washes, I don't think I'm going down the road of the uh, enamel washes because I really struggled with the new Gundam, uh, the Tamiya wash. Um, let's just have a quick look at my drawer. Um, where is it? Where is it? Oh, bear with me. Yeah, I didn't really like that, if I'm honest. I didn't really like it at all. Um, I don't know if there's something to do with the gloss coat I was using or um, uh, whether I wasn't using it right. I doubt it though, but um, it just it just wasn't for me. So I'll put that aside and, and it's grey as well. So uh, I'm going to need more of a contrast with reds and dark reds. So it'll be. Um, black and grey mix and uh, some of the dark Gundam markers so uh, let's take a, a little look at uh, anything else that I've, I'm, I may be using uh, with the rest of the uh, uh, kit okay um, some other paints I may be using along the way uh, the Tamiya range good old Tamiya you can get them everywhere in the UK um, I've never had a problem with them um, along with their thinner as well really good stuff um, these six here are the clears uh, that I've got, green, red, 
orange blue smoke which is a really versatile colour you can use that on a lot of things and the yellow either one of these is good for creating like a gold effect um, right uh, rubber uh, XF85 it does look like rubber so I'm going to be using it as, as a couple of places around the model that um, look like it could be rubberized like there's, there's a certain place under the arms and um, certain joints you know where polycaps are visible where instead of just having the polycap colour or painting it with something else paint it like rubber if it looks like rubber paint it like rubber uh, and obviously black and white and uh, other things I'm going to be using are I've got myself uh, some stainless steel mixing cups and some um, uh, 17 mil dropper bottles now I'm, what I'm going to do once I've mixed up these red colours from the Games Workshop well sorry Citadel red colours uh, I'll be decanting those into uh, these 17 mil bottles so it just makes life a little bit easier uh, when it comes to airbrushing it'll speed up the process a bit more because uh, uh, as you may know I've been dragging my heels a little bit with uh, some of the other stuff that I've been doing i.e. the uh, new Gundam's shield I've only got a little bit left to do but um, obviously I brought this over Christmas and uh, I did want to um, make a start on it so uh, what else do we have uh, let's, let's zoom out uh, just other things tell me your extra thing just in case um, uh, isopropyl alcohol for cleaning my airbrush and cleaning down the parts prior to painting um, and that's pretty much it guys so um, the next video you're going to get off me is a work in progress video and that will be to do with, that will be my first work in progress video of uh, Sazabi Verkai. So uh, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in another noob session.